we're going to spend a half hour or so gazing mostly at a simple picture of six persimmons in a row. Just gaze at them. Move towards Zen Enlightenment by gazing at this little picture for all this long time. If I make you gaze at them for half an hour, that's good. Let's gaze at Mu Chi's six persimmons. Mu Chi Fa Sheng was a Chan Buddhist monk and painter in 13th century China during the Southern Song Dynasty. The Chan in Chan Buddhism comes from a Sanskrit word meaning meditation. As Chinese Chan spread, other branches formed Japanese Zen, Korean Sian, and Vietnamese Tian. Through Mu Chi's work and life, we can learn about the exchange of culture and religious ideas in Asia during that time. He is famous for working with brush and ink drawings. His drawings are spontaneous and minimal, his brush strokes visible, and in this way they represent Buddhist ideals. Buddhist art captures the essence of a subject or atmosphere by depicting the least information required to convey an image. This can be thought of as the difference between description and conception. In Zen Buddhist art, the viewer and the viewed are unified. There is no sense of self as defined by one being separate from or in opposition to an other. Mu Chi, a pen name, was said to be a disciple of another famous Chinese artist, Liang Kai. Liang Kai, a court painter turned Chan Buddhist student, pioneered a style known as Ji Yi or sketch style. Sketch style attempts to evoke a subject or atmosphere, again with as little detail as possible. This requires a lot of forethought and skill. Zi Yi is representative of the ideals of sudden enlightenment, spontaneity, and mindfulness in Buddhism. Muchi's artwork was adored, but not so much in China. Regarded as rough, mundane, and unfit for exhibition outside of a monastery, Muchi became obscure in China over time. Japanese Buddhist monks would travel to China and return to Japan with Muchi's work, where he was considered a master. Japanese art collectors preserved much of his work, which would be replicated and interpreted throughout Japan's history. Now let's talk about persimmons. Persimmons have been grown in China since the beginning of time. They are eaten dried, frozen, or straight, and must be properly ripe. If not, they are too stringent. Culturally, persimmons are very popular around New Year, and in China can be given to people in the same way we in the Western world give thank you notes. It is said that persimmons were often planted in temple gardens because they exemplified four virtues, long life, sheltering birds, giving shade, and freedom from pests. Six Persimmons was once considered incapable of intellectual discussion. It grabbed my attention because I didn't understand it. However, the more you learn about Asian art conventions and the religious nature of the artist's life, the more the painting yields to exploration. The Persimmons are not on a unified plane of depth and height. They overlap and are different sizes and unevenly spaced. The ink washes become darkest towards the center, a technique often applied to leaves or trees to indicate depth and focus. The empty space is said to represent Chan Buddhist meditation. The mark-making techniques are the same as in his depictions of important Buddhist figures, signaling the unity of all things. There is a quote from Lawrence Sickman that goes, There is a reality about Muchi's persimmons that is final. Not much was known about Muchi in Japan, and not much is known of him today, so his work has always been open to interpretation. I do not think in Zen terms. I interpret six persimmons as being born out of meditation on the fruits depicted. If one were to visually show the way our brains interpret stimuli from the senses, this may be what you see. Focuses on the fruits, you know you want to eat one, so you see nothing else. You don't see the table it's on, or the surface texture of the room's walls. The darkest persimmon is the one your brain has decided to pick up, where your gaze is concentrated. You sense the depth of the other persimmons, but they matter less. To meditate on six persimmons is to transport yourself into the piece. The fact that I can feel like I am in the same room with these persimmons, that I can smell them and that I'm able to reach out and grab one, when all I'm given is a few gray shapes and lines is incredible. Another interpretation I saw was equally tactile. A YouTube commenter on the lecturer reference at the beginning of the video said he thought the variations in persimmon size and tonal value represented the different amounts of ripeness. He said he felt that he could taste the difference between them, with the underripe ones being sandy, and questioned whether the fruits were from different trees or entirely imaginary. I believe reactions to the Chen nature of Muchi's work parallel reactions by some to modern white canvas art. Often to see what is actually interesting about a white canvas painting requires a viewer to spend some time looking at it, and the same is true for six persimmons. For the 13th century, that kind of cerebral artwork was definitively Asian, and definitely monkish especially when much of it deals with Buddhist subject matter. Buddhism, which came from India to China and again was transported from China to Japan like Muchi's work, laid the foundations for the groundbreaking iconic artwork he created.